Hello everybody, welcome back. For those that do not know me, my name is Mary Beth Pecora and my blog is mybelovedsvoice.com. So we are, today is Holy Saturday and I have a little Easter message that I wanna share with you. We haven't forgotten about the Wisdom is Supreme series. I'm just taking a little side trip from it because this week the Lord has been nudging me and asking, reminding me of the question that he asked the Lord when his God, our Father, when he was hanging on the cross. So I want to share what I, what because of the Lord's prompting of that, I want to share what I learned from that uh, as we enter into Holy Saturday, such a special, special day. And of course, tomorrow is Easter. The question that Jesus asked, that we sometimes ask God ourselves, and the question that Jesus asked when he was hanging on the cross was, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? I took some examination time this week to open up the scriptures to learn more of that. And I found that, that verse from, our, from the Gospel of Mark, Mark 15, verse 34, where Jesus does say, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? So if we think of what the word forsake is, it's to abandon, to desert, to leave, or to turn one's back on. So here's Jesus hanging on the cross. Before he died, he asked God that question. Why Jesus asked that question, I learned, was because of this. He was taking upon himself, not just our sin, but the sin of the entire world. And Father God could not look upon him because of the sin that was all on Jesus. The sin of the entire world was on him. Some theologians even say that God could not look at Jesus. He actually turned his back on him and separated himself because he because of sin. And here's why. Because sin separates us from God. That's why Jesus came. Back in the book of Isaiah, the prophet said this in chapter 59, verse 2. It says, your iniquities, which is crookedness, perverseness, or evil, have separated you from our God. Your sins have hidden his face from you so that he will not hear you. Jesus understands all separation, all abandonment. He knows what that all feels like when someone turns their back on you. So I want to encourage you that whatever you're going through, whomever has abandoned you or whomever has forsaken you or turned their back on you, Jesus himself understands. He took not only our, all of our sin on the cross, he took our disappointments, all of our hurts, all of our misunderstandings, all of our pain and all of our sorrow, and he placed it upon himself. He carried it all for us. We don't have to carry it anymore. I know I'm speaking to hurting people today. Those who are estranged from, their, estranged from their families. Those who feel forgotten and forsaken. The Lord is saying today to you, He is identifying with you. But He took all that sorrow. He took all that pain. He took all that misunderstanding and He put it on the cross. The Bible tells us that the one who knew no sin 
became sin. So he took not only our sin, he took all of our suffering, past, present, and future. If you feel lonely, he is with you. If you feel abandoned, he is with you. If you feel separated, he is with you. If you feel maligned, he is with you. If you feel misunderstood, he is with you. King David even asked the same question as a godly sufferer. He was victimized by the, by the vicious and prolonged attacks of his enemies, whom he had not even provoked. And when he cried out, he asked the same question that Jesus asked. And though when he cried out in the book of Psalms, it's from Psalm 22, 1, you can go and look it up yourself. He had not been delivered yet. He asked the same question in the very first book, of Psalm 22, very first, first verse of Psalm 22. He says, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? In all of our hurt, God is with you. But Jesus promises never, ever, ever to leave us nor forsake us. That's in the book of Hebrews chapter 13 verse 5. So as we close on this Easter message, I want to leave you with this exhortation. It came from Isaiah in the 59th verse, 59th chapter, excuse me, the very first verse. Here's what he said. Surely the arm of the Lord is not too short to save, nor his ear too dull to hear. He's hearing your cries. He's hearing your desperate cries of reconciliation to being brought back to whomever has left you. Everlasting salvation is ours. But look what he says also. He said this, Isaiah said this long ago, Awake, awake, clothe yourself with strength, O arm of the Lord, as in the days gone by, as in generations of old. Was it not you who dried up the seas, the water of the great, great deep, who made a road in the depths of the sea so that the, the redeemed might cross over? The ransom of the Lord will return. They will enter Zion with singing. Everlasting joy will crown their heads. Gladness and joy will overtake them and sorrow and sighing will flee away. That's from Isaiah 51 verses 9 to 11. But the neat thing is, the beautiful thing is the prophet didn't stop there when he was making that proclamation because in the very next chapter, Isaiah 52 verse 1, he says this, he starts out the same way. He says, awake, awake, O Zion, clothe yourself with strength. But then he says this, put on your garments of splendor. Now, let me tell you what garments of splendor indicated in the Old Testament. Great significance was attached to the king's garment in ancient times. Wearing his garments was a sign of unique favor. To wear another's garment was to partake, listen to this, of his power, his stature, his honor, or his sanctity as a Christ follower. We are clothed in the righteousness of Jesus. We are redeemed from the curse of sin. And we are made clean by the washing of his blood. We are not forsaken. We are not abandoned. We are no longer separated from God because of what Jesus did on the cross. He died so that we can live. If you have never made a commitment to Jesus to serve and to love him, 
and to ask him in your heart. Or if you want to recommit your life to Jesus. You knew about Jesus, but you don't really know him. All you have to do is ask him to come into your heart and he will live and stay. Ask him to be your Lord and Savior. Because it tells us that in Romans 10 verse 9, it says, If we confess with our mouth and believe in our heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, you will be saved. Folks, it's time to confess and it's time to believe. Surely the arm of the Lord is not too short to save, nor his ear too dull to hear. We celebrate the risen, risen Lord on Resurrection Sunday tomorrow. And remember that he died so that we can live. Have a blessed Easter. Have a great time with your family. God's best for you. Remember to check out the blog, mybelovedsvoice.com. This message will be up there written. And if you're watching from YouTube, I would ask that you give me a little thumbs up and you can subscribe to the page, to my channel. Thanks so much. Have a good night and a good day. Bye-bye.